All right, guys, welcome to uh, episode one of Breaking Sad, where we uh, talk to artists and performers about uh, dealing with stage fright, anxiety, and depression. Uh, my first guest today is uh, Mr. Dan Spillane, who I have, uh, I've known Dan for over 10 years. Um, he was a highly successful contestant in uh, season three of Australian Idol. He uh, makes his living as a uh, singer and guitarist traveling around the country, and is currently a judge on Channel 7's all together now, coming soon. <laughs> Dan, thanks for uh, opening up and being brave and talking. thanks, thanks for having me, man, um, and thanks for embellishing the story. Yeah. Talk about it. It's all true. Yeah. Uh, as a lot of people know, you had a huge success on season three of Idol when it was sort of uh, you know at its peak. T TV ratings were not what they are today with the Netflix. The, yeah. the, the talent shows were uh, kind of at, at a bit of a peak at that point. Um, but what a lot of people don't know is that the year before that you uh, you went in and auditioned and they turned you away. I did, they did. So um, can you tell us about uh, how that made you feel and how you were able to sort of turn that rejection into something, you know, such a turnaround in just a, a 12 month period? Yeah, look, I remember that well, that audition was at the uh, Randwick race course and I remember going in and, and look, I just choked. I just, I didn't even, I don't even think I got through my full performance. I remember Dicko saying, you can't win this. I said, I can't, you can't, you can't, I can't. Yeah. And um, and they just turned me away and got, you know, and it, it was, it really hurt. I remember they, they give you a moment in a room with a camera. And I remember I was really, I was a bit emotional at that time. Is this after? Straight after, straight after. after it. And um, I remember singing into that and I had probably a little bit of moment of magic and maybe that got through to them. You know, when they checked out the footage and, and then they saw me next year and I thought, well, hang on, there might be something here. And they gave me a go, so I'm forever grateful for that. And um, so what did you do in that 12 month period to... Um... Well, so I, I left, I was working real estate at the time. Um, I was doing well at it, uh, but I didn't love it. And I wanted to be, I've always wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be a musician as a kid. And, um, I moved to Queensland at the time. I, I, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Back in touch with my stepfather, who was pretty influential with my music in those days, and um, and I was almost not going to try out again. And then I spoke to another mate, Jeremiah, and he said, "Look, you'll regret this." I remember that. And if you don't try it again, and and the rest is history. I'm never trying out. And, it sounds like you were pretty. Uh... I want to say stubborn, but like that you you knew you had something, and even if Dicko Dicko is saying no, you don't. You're saying no, I do. So yeah. there, there was a drive there that like he didn't see it because I didn't show it at the time, but I, I knew I had something there. Um, you know, it, it, the talent rat runs in the family, and and it was pretty special to me music growing up. You know, way to express yourself through singing, and um, I knew there was something something there, but I didn't know how to get it out, and I didn't know how to consistently get that magic at that time out. And was there a lot of uh, private practice at home in, in that period of time too? I won't lie, there wasn't. There wasn't? No. Uh, no so it was more of a, a, a mental thing. mental thing. Okay, so yeah. getting getting through that confidence barrier yeah. and being able to get that stuff inside that you knew you had and get it out. I should add, I did have five lessons from the great Vanetta Fields, which is, you know, that's like a thousand from anyone else, but she she more gave me the confidence and, and I'll, I don't mind blowing the trumpet on this because it's Vanetta Field. She said this, she said you've got one of the the better, better uh, male voices I've ever heard. I saw that in your, in your, uh, in your bio. The right, her okay. and, and was it Glenn Shorrock as well? Oh, Glenn Shorrock gave me a wonderful compliment when I supported him and he, he came out after I supported him. He said he should have won the damn thing, blah, blah, blah. And that was nice and... Um, yeah. Oh, you certainly could have. I mean, you were you were, you were killing it. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, top top five, wasn't it? Fifth place. Fifth yeah. place. Um, all right. Well, to to piggyback onto that, so you know, the following season you do really well. You you uh, hit the top twelve. The the public votes you into the top twelve. That's so right. You're very very popular with the Aussie public. Look, you can't believe it. Um, when that moment happens, I I remember that well. And your phone. You turn your phone off. There's you know three hundred missed calls. There's two hundred <laughs> texts, literally. Wow. And um, and then the funny thing was the day we were moving into the house, my cousin was the private entertainment, and it was uh, like the three waiters. And what they did, they walk around and serve you drinks, and then they break out. And, so when you say into their house, so everyone in Idol is in a in, yeah. in a house in those days. My cousin Daryl, and he was one of the waiters, and they start breaking out the chorus and singing. That's their thing. And they said, don't give it away, don't give it away. So I've got the excitement of being there. 
of you know just making it into the top two of Australian Idol, and then my cousin's there, and I want to go, yeah, you know, <laughs> and then I can't say anything, you know. Um, yeah. um, you know, you look like a natural out there. You're getting great oh, fit, know, really. getting great feedback from the judges. You're getting uh, audience votes, but um, I've heard you uh, say to me in private that uh, you had absolute crippling stage fright, and you you were terrified to be because you haven't really done that much public performance at that point, had you? I performed singing, but I'm. I'd never, bef- no, I'd performed singing maybe once without a guitar on my own. Um, and probably f- half a dozen times with a guitar or some sort It's very, support. very green at this point. Very green. And it's nice that you've addressed it that way, but I've got to be honest, like I was the only guy that I know of when I started out, I was going like this. Oh, you yeah, had the shakes? Yeah, had the shakes. I was really nervous. I remember um, um, Mark Holden said something about that and... What did he say? He said, you look like you're scared shitless. It's probably because I am, you know. Um, but I overcame it in the end. Um, the last two, three, four performances were pretty good. So it was just a, you just dove in the deep end and just, just learned the hard way? You just, you kind of, the old saying, you have a look at yourself and just go, look, you... Fight or flight sort of yeah, thing. You've got enough to believe yourself and and, and you do. And you, yeah. So again, it was that internal belief. I, I know I've got something in here. Yeah. I've, I've got to get it out. Well, there's anxiety there, and sorry, you touched on that before. And with with anxiety, it um, I'm just, sorry, just lost my train of thought. Um, it, it it's it's in a demons, and you're doubting yourself, and you think, what's the worst thing that's possible? What's the worst thing? It's a good way to think of it. Yeah, and when 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 the voice called me, you know that 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 was my thought. I've got nothing to lose here. Mm. It's the worst that can happen. I, I go out, I stuff up, you know, that's it. Yeah. So yeah. And it's, I did. It's just entertainment, right? Yeah, it's just entertainment, you know. What's the worst thing? Oh, two million people sing. So you're singing really badly. That's probably the worst thing. And that's what, um, you know, Mark, Mark Gable on the, on the set of All Together now, that's what he was telling me. You, you have to stop giving a... I won't use the word. Yeah. Stop, just stop giving an F. And yeah. you can see that in his performances. He's yeah. out there. He's, he's in the moment. He's having fun. You care because you love it and you're nervous because you, uh, you want it to be good. You want to do well. But at the same time, you've got to... You got to let go. Yeah, you do, and it's it, it's an amazing feeling when you do. You know, you the freedom and power. Um, and that's what we get addicted to, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. A healthy addiction. Yeah. All right. So from there, you're you're riding that high of um, being on Rove Live. You're performing at the AFL Grand Final at the MCG. Uh, you're basically a household name at this point, and then it all sort of disappears. So. Um, how does that feel going from reality TV to back to reality? Was there some depression there? Was there a come down effect? Um, I didn't really feel it. I kind of anticipated it. Um, I didn't plan to come fifth or second. I planned to win it. Um, look, in hindsight, uh, um, Ricky Lee's a great example of this. You gotta have plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E and onwards. And, and and take that platform and go somewhere. And I didn't, that's just honesty. honesty. Um, you re- any regrets in, in that? No regrets, it's it's just, that's it's what it was. Um, but no, I didn't, I didn't. I don't think I had depression come from it. I, came, I went into a relationship pretty soon after it. Um, that didn't work out a year later, and then I lost a lot of weight. I go in and out between losing weight. And, um, and then the funny thing was, I didn't do any Real, I think I did, you know, a couple of corporate gigs straight after it. You went but into uh, lawn mowing, did you? I went into lawn mowing. I went into sacking shells at Woolies. And, you know, I'm not ashamed of that. It's it's the real world. Mm-hmm. Um, so did you intend to make a living at music at that point? Or were you like, well, I'm going to have a break from You're going to laugh and you should laugh. <laughs> I didn't know I could play and sing at the same time for three hours. Okay, it's like building up that repertoire. I didn't, I didn't know I could do that. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, some songs I can't. And then I just started booking gigs. And Surprising, because you're such a strong guitar player now. Well, I've always been decent on the guitar. I I felt but the singing took a while to come forward. Anyway, and then get the two to married work, the work two together. together. Um, and then I just got a bit tired of what I was doing, and I started booking gigs. And you fake it to make it. And I've been doing that about ten years now, thereabouts. Um, I'm loving it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, has has your idea of being successful changed from then to now? My idea of it, no, I don't think it's changed. I don't think it's changed. I think it's more acceptance. Of, you know, it's a it's a tough, fickle market, but 
if I'm, you know, performing at someone, some hotel or someone's wedding and I'm getting a lot of enjoyment out of th their joy of watching me and hearing me play, it's a, it's a pretty good feeling and that's the worst it is. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's great. It is. I always consider that quite an honour, like you're, you're the yeah. soundtrack to maybe the most important day of, of their lives. somebody's lives. Yeah. So that's, um, that's quite a responsibility and a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right, so you mentioned uh, relationships coming out of coming out of Idol that you had one that didn't work out. So um, in the past thirteen years, you're, you're making a living as a musician. Um, the hours aren't always ideal. They, no. they don't always complement uh, somebody that's working nine to five, um, trying to you know in, interlock a lifestyle with with somebody that's got a, a regular job, a day job. Um, so have you found music to be uh, a, a conflict to some of your relationships? Has it caused issues? Has it been a yeah, benefit? You know, it does. It's not easy um, for being with a musician. I can empathise with that. Um, em empathise with that. Um, the first thing I noticed was Mondays are our weekends usually. Exactly, yeah. And you're ringing your mates and you go, what are you doing? Like, it's <laughs> Monday. I'm at work. It's like, oh. And then yeah, it actually does. It brings you down. Yeah. Bit. And then with relationships, um, and, and they're inviting you to things Friday, Saturday. Yeah, you you come, come to my birthday, come to the pub. And you're turning up late, and everyone's leaving. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, turning up at the start, no one's there and yeah. before you go to the gig. And um, the relationships too, because I'm a night owl, you know, and and it's tough for my my lady now, and she's a wonderful, wonderful person, she's very supportive. But you know, I'm up late at night, and um, Trish, yeah, Trish works Trisha. nine to five. Yeah, or eight. Eight to five, eight to five thirty, or something like that. She works very hard. Um, and you guys been together a few a few years now. Coming up to four years. Four years. years. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And so um, you you make it work. You find find a couple of days. Yeah, yeah you make it work. Like date night. You, you find yeah date night. Um, we just went did the I don't mind giving a plug to Holy Moly up there at the cross indoor pub pub. Uh, oh, Newtown the the golf. They got another one there too. Oh. They got one underneath the Coca Cola. Oh great! Oh, oh, yeah. oh they the. Um, that where X Studio was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have to check that out. We thought it was a nightclub. I'm like, what's this? <laughs> we're never going there. What? <laughs> yeah, you're right to think that something called Holy Moly <laughs> in, in King's Cross. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, sorry to get us distracted, but we had such a good time. Uh, so yeah, it is difficult uh, maintaining relationships. Uh, you, you lose, your, you, you know, your friends. Uh, it's hard to keep in touch with your family. Um, being in our industry. Have you uh, had any encounters with depression and anxiety uh, over the last 10 or so years in your professional life? Yeah, look, sure. The, the, um, you know, honestly, depression runs in, in my family. Um, it's, it's more common out there now that we know, and it's, you know, it's okay to talk about it. And, and um, I, I think I made a, a few poor choices in relationships that didn't work out well, that weren't the right person for me, vice versa. And I'd get really down after it. And, um, after a breakup? Oh, yeah, you know, and really, really down. So were you ever relationship dependent, that you, you needed that to feel 100%? Maybe in my early 20s, um, but from mid-20s onwards, no. Um, but you'd break up and then you'd spiral? Yeah, you know, excess, you know, too much eating, too much binge drinking. Um, yeah, and then it, it, before you know it gets out of hand, um, yeah, you know, you're out of shape like I am now, but it's, that's all part of it. It's more, to got, love, more to love. It's more to love, um, but you know, it's just all part of the journey and then you got to go climb back up, up the mountain again. Yeah, and so when you do find yourself in the states of excess and things are spiralling, how are you able to get yourself uh, back up the mountain? Because obviously, as we know, some people get to the bottom of the mountain and they can't dig themselves mm -hmm. out and you know and keep digging deeper so I mean uh, you've got yourself into a pretty healthy relationship healthy state of mind um, what what advice can you give to someone that's trying to trying to dig their way back up yeah look well first of all for someone that's younger do it when you're younger because it, it really does get harder the older you get but um, you know even just getting up in the morning going for a walk um, that the endorphins are released in your body psychologically it's very 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 good for you to do that um also awareness of your behavior of your actions you know well, what hang on, what what am i going to do why do i need to do that do mm. i need to do that things like that can help yeah um and i think that awareness is a good thing you know like uh hearing that that negative feeling or voice in your head but don't don't let it overpower you you know uh you control it you know ha yeah be aware of it but have it be 
you know, the radio in the next room rather than the speaker that's blaring in your face. That's, that's really good advice, Joe. Yeah. And also, you know, the naysayers, the doubters, the people that want to put you down and you, you can't control that. All you can do is be the best that you can be for you. Yeah. Um, and Focus on what you can control yeah. in life. Yeah, just, just crack. Don't worry about it. You know? Yeah. Water off a duck's back. That's exactly right. And have you uh, gotten any professional assistance over the years with any any of those issues at all? Or have you just... Sure. You have? Yeah, look, sure. I'm, I'm not ashamed. Of, I've got professional help, you know, with my depression, anxiety and things like that. I'm not ashamed to say that. Um, and I encourage anyone else out there that has that to, to do that. It was really helpful for me. Um, I think as, as guys, um, there's the, the stigma that these are things we can't talk about. Exactly. You know, we have to be tough. We have to, we can't show weakness. But I mean, it's brave of you to admit that and, and be able to say, look, this has gotten beyond my control and I, didn't, I need to talk to someone about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's not a sexist thing, but it can be harder for guys because of what you just said. Yeah. Um, we, yeah. we don't like to show our, no, we our don't. flaws and weaknesses. But girls, girls too, you know. Uh, there's that old joke that um, our lives on Facebook are what we wish they actually were. <laughs> so people like to show their best side out there. People like to, you know, show the, the, the selfies in the glamorous locations and everything's just from 10 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> everything's honky-dory. I but... wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if things are not okay, it's all right to, uh, to find someone to talk about. Absolutely. With it. 100%. Yeah, and you... We, we're able to... Uh, get any coping mechanisms or tricks or anything that helps you from those professional experiences? Coping mechanisms. Oh, coping okay. mechanisms. You said that the, the exercise thing, getting that indoor so, um, Positive things, yeah, yeah. Coping mechanisms, exercise is number one. I think it's I think it's the best thing you can do. Um, planning your day, small goals, you know, they talk about what's your goal, you want to win a million dollars or get a million dollars or earn it, get your first house, how are you going to get there? It's little steps on the way. How are you going to get to that step? What are you going to do as soon as you get out of bed? You know, it's small goals. Attainable, goals. small goals. Small goals of goals, little steps to get to there. And then monitoring that. Okay, how am I going? All right, yep, I'm going. Looks like I'm going good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's great advice. So we're in a very competitive industry. It can be cutthroat. Um, do you ever find yourself comparing to other singers and other guitarists? Um, do you get jealous of them at all? And are you able to use that feeling in a positive way, or does it uh, does it bring you down? I I don't think I compare. Um, I I just I do my own thing. You know, if I'm at a, a solo or a band gig, and I just I, I just be me. Um, and if they like me, they like me. If they don't, well, have another look, turn around. <laughs> Next time, have another couple of drinks, and then you start sounding. Yeah, yeah. But you all, you, every time you're there, you want to be loved. You want to be appreciated. Everyone mm. wants to be loved. Well, we're, we're in a line of work that's kind of based on seeking validation. Yeah, it is. We want the likes, we want the, we want the applause, you know. There's never enough applause, you know. It never gets, it never gets old. Um, every song, just, mm. you know, thank you for that solitary clap. <laughs> the golf clap in the corner. Yeah. I actually do appreciate that. I had a friend from Canada come over and play here. She did a few songs. And she came over to me and she's like, am I, am I doing something wrong? Is, yeah. so, and, and I'm like, no, why? She's like, no one's clapping. It's like, strange. Oh, no, that's just what Aussies are. That's what. Because apparently I heard the pub gigs in Canada at a restaurant, cafe, everyone will stop, clap. After every song, there's an appreciation there. But it's kind of been lost over here. We're, we're the convict nation, you know, and the tall poppy syndrome. And it really does exist, you know. We see someone doing, oh, well, let's, bring, let's bring that guy back down to earth or that chick back to earth, you know. Mm. She thinks she's... White hot, whatever. Yeah. Tall, um, tall poppy syndrome. Tall poppy syndrome. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's a big part of our, our our nation. So you know, you don't find yourself uh, getting threatened by by the next youngest, younger, better looking, faster, fancier singer that comes. Oh, along. they're all better looking than me. <laughs> but threatened? No, look, not not yet. You know, I'm I'm still not not old yet, but I'm just you know. I think that's important what you said uh, that you just focus on you what makes you unique find what you do you can take inspiration from people that you like but uh, you know that's that's a, I guess a positive way of using using jealousy as inspiration oh, that's the yeah. way I try to see it like like oh, I go see you know Joel at the, in that Frankie's band and I go home and I need to practice eight hours like that, that's yeah. taking jealousy and uh, putting a positive spin on it that's the correct way. 
Yeah. Good on you for that. Um, no, look, yeah, just be me, be myself. Energy, bring energy to the performance. Um, bring energy, you know, talk to the crowd. What do you want? What are you doing over there? And there's some, t there might be two people in the background doing something and integrate it with everyone else, embarrass them just a little bit, you know. Yeah. A bit of laughs and a bit of comedy, a bit of entertainment, a bit of music. Um, but I think energy is my biggest thing, bringing that to the performance. Well, I definitely felt that uh, having you around on uh, All Together Now, you brought a huge amount of energy and it was infectious. Like uh, you, we would walk into set each day and guaranteed to be here singing something. And before you know it, there'd be 15 other judges uh, gathered around singing along and it was, it was quite inspirational and it was a real pleasure to have you there, man. Sorry and thank you. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> I remember um, the lovely Sylvie Palladino. I see come up, she had a look, she goes, oh no, Dan, you're okay. But some of the others need to shut up. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's, a, that's an awesome it's quite an endorsement. Silly yeah. All right, so speaking of all together now, so uh, you're, you're back in the limelight. Um, we're both lucky enough to be uh, on the other side of it now, judging. Much better. <laughs> no, the pressure's on other people now. So yeah. we're, we're on this uh, panel of judges on a show called All Together Now. Um, how, are you, how, how are you finding this whole experience? Yeah, I, I know. I, I had so much fun. Yeah, I could tell. So many <laughs>, laughs, such a good time. Um, I had to actually restrain myself sometimes from having a good time because I could be overbearing with my excitement. But um, I was really surprised. I thought a lot of the artists we would have seen, and I thought maybe a couple of them would be really good. But I had to see, I think I've met them maybe one, and then I thought there was five or six that were world class. Mm, the standard was... was like, I, I, I don't think I could have done Good jobs. Some of them, some of them do. Well, like that's one thing that I find. When we're talking about nerves and stage fright. I'm fine on stage, but if I know that there's a great guitarist in the audience or a great singer, uh, I, immediately, I immediately freeze up. And I can only imagine looking up and seeing a hundred. Oh, intimidating! Then, you know, okay, there's a guy from the choir boys. There's a guy from Boom Crash Opera. There's Ronan Keating. Uh, don't be nervous. Like that's uh, that takes some serious uh, gut, serious guts. guts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And, and absolutely. I remember standing there looking at it when you guys were, I had the moment. Anyway, yeah. I, it's extremely intimidating. So for you being on the other side of it now and having gone through the experience, what what's some advice you would give to, say, a young dance for Lane if you could go back or, or someone that is considering going on one of these shows nowadays? Well, on the technical side, it's, it's 90 seconds. It's not a lot of time. So you've got to capture and win someone over in that time. So that's, it comes down to song choice. Um, it comes down to you know, what part of the song you want to use in it. Um, the light and shade. Um, you, you want to connect. You want to get through them. You want to you know, get the shivers down the spine. So yeah, it's all of those things. It's, it's, it's tough, it's a tough one. But you just got to go out there, find something you're comfortable with, connect with the audience, sh show them your skills, and smash it. And if and if it all uh, doesn't go according to plan, you come back the next year and you you win it later. And you, you try and try it this guy. That's right. Yeah. So it's a, it's all about having that uh, internal belief and drive that. Yeah, never give up. Don't give up. It's, it's only rejection at the end of the day. It's not the worst thing. Well, I always thought um, people in high school would say to me, you know, what do you want to do? I want to be a musician. Oh, what's what's your fallback plan? Would be the next question. So I always no. thought, no fallback plan. <laughs> no. This is what I'm going to do. And it's kind of like, uh, you've got to have no plan B. Um, yeah. You know, if you have to make a living doing, doing a bit of teaching, doing your yeah. pub gigs, doing your weddings, what, whatever it takes, right? Yeah. Well, I think we're doing the fallback plan. Um, in many ways. <laughs> this is it. And this, is, this is the dream. <laughs> no, look, it's all good. We love what we do. We do it because it's a passion. Sometimes it's therapy for, for us. Um, I know there's times I go and do a gig and I'm like, oh, I don't feel like it. I'm just not feeling great. Mm. And I can guarantee you, every one of those times that I've done it and been disciplined enough to go through with it, I feel so much better. You feel better by the end of it, don't you? 100%. Yeah. 100%. It's hard to uh, channel, I sort of call it going into character, because you know, when you get there, I'm a pretty uh, socially awkward, socially anxious guy, but when you get there, you've got to fake it. Yeah, you've you got to say hi to the managers, hi to the locals, get on stage, banter, yeah. and fake it till you make it. By the, by the time you've spent an hour smiling and joking with people, you're like, well, I actually do feel yeah. great. I actually am becoming that character. Yeah. So. That's, that's a good analogy. Um, sometimes I use a bit of cynicism, just a little bit. Uh, that can help. Yeah, yeah for sure. 
Okay, Dan, well, thank you for your honesty today. And um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to benefit from your advice and insight. And hopefully uh, they can learn from some of our mistakes and not make the same mistakes. mistakes. (laughs) And uh, thanks for being brave and sharing. And uh, yeah, man. Thanks, Joe. Good luck with everything. Thanks, mate. Next week, we're swapping sides. It's going to be (laughs) Joe's. I'll be lying down in the... uh... (laughs)